We're going to end our discussion of deflections with an example. And this example is kind of long, so I'm going to break it up into four parts. This first part will cover just um, going over calculating the moments of inertia. The second part will be the dead load deflection. The third part, dead and live load deflection, and then the live load deflection. And the last part will be the time-dependent creep deflections and total long-term deflection. And so the first thing we're going to do is calculate the moments of inertia. And a lot of the nitty-gritty details of the calculations will be in actually a fifth video where uh, if you want to see how I actually calculate moments of inertia and stuff like that, you can watch that video. Here's the problem. Uh, it's 20 foot 8 inches clear span and uh, it's got different amounts of steel at the left, middle, and right and it's uh, indeterminate. The cross section is a T-beam. Okay? And so uh, that T-beam uh, is uh, given there and the height is 18 inches the flange is 5 inches thick, so that means 13 inches below the flange. And uh, the web width is 10 inches, and it's uh, 3,000 PSI concrete. And uh, it's indeterminate, and so I've given you the moment diagram. And I have the dead moment and live moment at left, middle, and right. And the service moment is just a sum of dead plus live, which you could easily add up but I've just included it here. So for example, at A, 23.2 plus 32.1 equals 55.3. And what we need to do, what we're required to do for this, is calculate the immediate deflection and the long-term deflection. And that immediate deflection, the live load deflection, involves taking the dead plus live total deflection and subtracting the dead load uh, deflection. And the reason we need to separate it out like that, uh, let me let me draw here, um, get rid of this. Uh, let's see. I don't want to draw. Hmm. Okay. I'm trying to maybe escape. Oh, there we go. Get rid of that. Uh, so if you don't know, in VidGrid, I actually don't. Uh, project the presentation. I just roll down the slides and, and I put the video recorder right over where the slide preview is. Um, if you want to see what it looks like, um, I don't think I can see if I can show you how this works. No. Anyway, uh, uh, getting distracted. The reason we need to do this dead plus live minus the dead is this. Let me try and sketch this out. So what I've tried to draw is that you'll have a little bit of cracking under the dead load. And when you get the full dead plus live load on there, you get a lot more cracking. And so the moment of inertia gets smaller as you crack the beam more. And so we're going to have a different, you know, the equation for deflection is something, something, something over EI. And the I will be different. It'll be changing as you increase the load. And so we're going to calculate an I for dead load only, calculate the dead load deflection, calculate a smaller I for dead plus live, and calculate the deflection for dead plus live. And in the end, the live load deflection will be dead plus live minus dead. 
And the reason we just can't go straight to live load deflection is because the moment of inertia is changing. Okay, so we're going to calculate this immediate deflection at the mid-span, and it's going to take uh, two parts. We're going to do dead plus live, and then subtract uh, dead. And before we start, we need to know, is the beam cracked or not? Okay, so the cracking moment is given here, and all that is is this. You know, right, that stress is my over i. Just solve that for the moment. And for sigma, just put in the stress, the tensile strength of the beam. And that's 7.5 squared f prime c. Um, the maximum moment, ma, uh, is given. I gave you that for dead and for dead plus life at the three different spots. And this is something new in 2019. Uh, you would think that if the maximum moment is greater than the cracking moment, then it's cracked. But in 2019, if the maximum moment, ma, is greater than two-thirds of the cracking moment, then you're going to use the cracked moment of inertia. And uh, this, instead of m crack, putting in two-thirds m crack, uh, really changes the solution from pre-2019 to 2019. And so m crack, for this problem, let me get out of the drawing mode, is here. Um, the, the moment of inertia of the uncracked section of the T, T beam is 98, 96 inches to the fourth. The centroid is 5.16 inches from the top and 12.94 inches from the bottom. And if you want to see the details of that, look at the fifth video and I, I show you how to calculate the moment of inertia. But you should know that from dynamics, from mechanics and materials and that sort of stuff. The cracking stress, the tensile strength, is 7.5 square root F prime C. And you use PSI, so when you put 3,000 in there, 411 PSI. And, you know, it's roughly a tenth, 3,000 in compression, 400 in tension. The negative cracking moment, the tension's at the top, so the distance from the neutral axis to the top was 5.16 inches. Uh, you get 65.7 foot kips, and two-thirds of that is 43.8. And it uh, takes less moment to crack it at the bottom uh, because it makes sense. Just a minute. To crack the top in negative moment, you have to crack that entire 62-inch wide concrete piece but to crack the bottom in positive moment you only have to crack that 10 inch wide bottom okay so much harder to crack uh, in negative moment than in positive moment and two-thirds of 26.4 is 17.6 foot kips now we need to see, is it cracked or not cracked? And we need to compare, we're not gonna compare it to 65.7, we're gonna compare it to 43.8. That's new in 2019. So at A, negative, uh, we were given uh, the dead moment was 23.2 and dead plus live was 55.3. And two thirds, we just calculated this, two thirds of the cracking moment is 43.8. So under dead load, it's not cracked, but under dead plus live, it is cracked. Um, at C, the other negative moment on the other side, uh, so it's the same cracking moment, negative cracking moment, 43.8, two-thirds is 43.8. Uh, dead is 36.7 on the right side, and dead plus live is 88.4. So once again, under the dead load only, not cracked. And for dead and live, uh, it, it is cracked. Okay. And finally, at the positive moment in the middle, the cracking moment's much smaller. It's two thirds of the cracking moment is 17.6. The dead only in the middle is 26.6, so cracked. That's bigger than 17.6. Uh, 
and obviously the live plus dead is cracked at 63.2 okay so under dead the two left and right ends are not cracked the middle's cracked and under dead plus live all three are cracked and that means because all three are cracked we have to calculate the cracked moment of inertia Again, I, I leave out the details for this here, but if you want to see the details of calculating the crack moment of inertia, that was our very, very first homework at the start of the semester. Uh, you can review those details in the fifth video. Uh, you have to calculate the E of the concrete, and then E of steel divided by E of concrete is N. You get the equivalent uh, area of concrete, that equivalent area of the steel in terms of concrete. You multiply N times AS. And, and then you have to solve for the uh, neutral axis and you calculate the crack moment of inertia. You did this in homework one. Uh, and if you want to see the details for this, you can check the fifth video out. You do this at all three. There's B, positive, A, negative, and C, negative. And so from left to right, 1928 uh, inches to the fourth, when it's cracked, uh, 2899 and 2697. Okay, so in the next video, we'll use all these numbers and we'll calculate the dead load deflection.